Alright. That's on. Alright, cool. Well, I'll see you when you get here. Set the computer up. The camera? The camera, sorry. Okay, this, which one? The one in this box? Or wait, this in the camera. Where's it? Oh, it's right next to me. <laughs> okay. And what's that? That just, it hooks on this thing. And then you lock it in, right? Yeah. Oh. And then right. I. Okay. I guess it is. Perfect. Cool. Cool, cool. So everything's on. I just didn't push the start button for the camera. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Perfect. I'll see you soon. Winnie boy, what's up?
This place looks so cool. I mean, it looks cooler when we're filming because the lights are on. The lights are on. The lights are pretty good right now. Coming right in the window. And it's just a workshop, so but we're filming for. I got. I got to film last night. Uh, it, it sounds good, but it's not Yo, so in that email said sorry for the confusion. I was going to this.
Okay. okay. I think this microphone might be the one we're using. Is this is this the mic? Can you guys hear me on this mic? Yes. Yeah, we hear you. Okay. All right. Awesome. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Who sang that song? Mr. Rogers. Where's Mr. Rogers from? Anybody Latrobe, know? Anybody? Yeah. He's from Latrobe? Yeah, somewhere around here. He's from yeah. Pennsylvania. You know where Latrobe's at? Maybe. I know where Latrobe's at. Maybe it's because the computer was off. Uh, yeah. Oh, did you see that? Uh, battery is exhausted. It's early in the morning to be exhausted. <laughs> right? We are going to record this. We can record it on here, though, right? Yep, that's recorded. Okay. All right. All right. So this is the new setup we're going to use for a little bit. What do you guys think? I like it. I'll just get that cleaned up back there a little bit. Get some lighting, better lighting going on. But we're we're uh, we're a work in progress. If anybody comes around here, you can always let them know that as well. You know, just let them know this is all a work in progress. Let them know that there's there's going to be constant construction barrels all over our office because we're always going to be building. So let them guys know, right? They could be imaginary ones, all right? Um, so let's uh, let's get into it. Before so, I got to change the background. Once you guys want to look at the uh, the giraffe. We got a giraffe today. I don't know where this giraffe is. I like at. how big that painting is, and it's in that tiny giraffe. It kind of looks out of its element, right? Then, you know, I typically see like a giraffe would be like I don't know by trees. <laughs> All right, so let me we'll put something better up. Paint some better background. If you guys have any questions, I know you guys are. You know, obviously we're out there. We're, giving presentations, getting sit downs, all that kind of stuff. There we go. Um, so if you guys run into some stuff, you know, I, I might be able to help you. So next time you can handle it a little bit better. Uh, I know we've been um, making phone calls on discount cards. You yeah. know, one thing I like to say on discount cards is the word activate. You know, I tell them that their discount card is in uh, and it's ready for them. You just have to make, you just have to, uh, uh, sit down with them and show them how to get it activated so that they can start taking advantage of all the discounts. And uh, right now, you could be paying for something that you shouldn't be paying for. I was able to help a lot of our members save a lot of money on their out-of-pocket costs. Uh, and the best thing is, and the reason I'm giving you a call here today, Joe, is that they actually uh, came up with a brand new discount card I don't know if you remember your old one. I would even say that, you know, because uh, I, 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 you know, this is just me because I've, I've done this for a while. I would say, I don't know if you remember your old one. It was kind of like pink and it was just a little floppy thing. Well, now everything's done electronically. So I can show you how to get it up set up electronically and you'll have it right on your phone. So everywhere you go, you'll be able to use it, start saying, you know, something like that. So they're just using those words, help some of garbage, right, uh, on the discount cards. And then how to collect referrals for discount cards and offer discount cards. So um, if, uh, well, what I'll do is we'll, we'll record this and, and I'll make training videos. We're working on the app right now. And uh, last week we made 10 videos. So I'm excited about that. We made um, uh, how to build rapport, um, why we are here. Uh, we did, uh, I think we have a child safe call, a will kit call. POS call, solidification. Um, so we got like a good handful of videos and they're pretty much gonna be done by today. 
Yeah. So I'm excited for that. And, and then we're going to go, it's going to go right onto the app until the app's up. They're going to be all on YouTube. So we'll have, it'll be on the agency YouTube channel. We'll be able to just dive right in and, and have those. And more importantly, it's, it's not just for, for us, but it's going to be for all of the, 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 the people that, you know, you're going to want to have that material. Let's say that, you know, you brought in one of your good friends and, and, you know, you're, you're still new in the business. So you're like, I don't know if I'm even the right guy to be even telling them how to do the freedom of choice because I'm still mastering my own freedom of choice, right? Well, let me just have them watch Gia or, or, or me, or I'll have, I'm going to have guests. We're going to have a lot of guests coming in. And believe me, that's why I'm getting this set up because when they come here, <clears throat> we're going to have them over here and I'm going to make them give us all their fires and we're going to record it, you know, so we can, you'll have it forever and ever and ever. They just think what we're building, you know? Um, so, so this is just the foundation. And, and if you think about any sort of foundation, it's not very fun. Um, you know, if you were to go build a house right now, uh, first of all, if there was a house already there, guess what you have to do? You have to rip that one down. I was driving along the, um, uh, Lake Michigan on, on the bike. And, uh, so you guys can hear this. All right. Does this sound good with the microphone and everything? It's kind of far away. We got, I got to get an extender for it. But I was driving along and there's these beautiful houses on, on the lake over there. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's just driving along. But some of them are old houses and, and they just don't fit with all the other ones. You know, there's older and small little houses. And you can see some of those houses were bought and they have big signs up. It says demolition. And you can see, you, you can see through, through the fence and everything. They're demolishing the old houses so that they can do what? Sorry. So they can build a new house, right? So, you know, sometimes we, we talk about in the business, we said, when you get here, the first thing you have to do is you have to put a foundation in, into your career, you know, and that's learning the script, uh, going through training class, hitting your first milestone. Um, there, there's going to be four milestones. Okay, let's talk about the four milestones. There's no longer going to be a release anymore. So don't prepare anybody for a release because there's no releases. Um, it's, it's just one of their first milestones. So the first milestone is when they go through training and, and they're able to, to go out on their own. When they're able to finally hit that first milestone where they don't need anybody, we can give them a lead pack. They know how to set an appointment. They know how to go through the presentation. They're, they're good enough to, to, to at least enroll one out of three families into the benefits at that point. Um, and now they're able to start learning on their own. You know, the, the, the second milestone is, is going to be 100 presentations. They're going to get a t-shirt. So you're going to say zero to 100 real quick. Oh, I like that. You know, <laughs> um, and, uh, and, 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 and we'll also have, have a little, little meeting, a little celebration. There might be some other stuff we'll, we'll do along with it. You know, that'll be their second milestone. Um, their, their third milestone is when we have the conversation about uh, getting into leadership and management. So that's when we actually sit down and, and we have that, 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 that conversation about getting into leadership and management. And, and if, and if, in, in either way, if they, um, uh, if they decide to get in leadership and management or not, we're going to work. If you get into decide to go into leadership and management, what we're going to do is we have what's called an SA bullpen. So before you become a supervisor, this is the supervisor bullpen. For the month or two months before you become a supervisor, this is what we're going to do extra preparation. So when you get there, it's not like, well, now what? When you get there, you're already going to know what you, you're probably going to be doing most of it by then. So you don't even have to really learn anything. And when I was a GA, they wanted me to be an MGA and I wanted to be an MGA, but I said, I don't want to be an MGA until I can do all the things an MGA can do. So like one of the things they said an MGA needs to do is you have to be able to be able to do hires. You have to be able to, to generate hires on a weekly basis to grow your organization. Um, and I was like, all right, well, if I can generate hires on a weekly basis to be an MGA. I'm not going to wait to be an MGA and then like try and figure it out then. I'd rather already be getting, doing all that stuff. So I was doing all the MGA stuff as a GA before I was really even an MGA, you know? So 
that's typically that's how it worked really well for me. And and this essay bullpen kind of kind of does that for us, you know. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think their their fourth milestone is going to be when you get promoted, and then your fifth milestone is when you get your first renewal check. That's a big one. The fifth milestone is when you get your first renewal check. That's just, it's such an amazing thing to get. I'm telling you, it's like, where did this come from? It just comes out of nowhere too. And if you have really good retention, they don't make you wait uh, 13 months to get your first, you know, renewal and release money. Uh, they actually give it to you in your ninth month. <laughs> so if you have good quality, you can start getting your, 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 your money paid out to you sooner as well. Um, and what's also nice is after you're here for one year, now you're not on net to gross anymore. So, so what in your first year in the company, uh, they, they look at how much business that you gross and how much business that you net. And that's called your net to gross. So if I grossed 10 and I netted 8,200, then what's my net to gross? 82%, right? So um, at the end of that year, they don't look at that, 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 that net to gross anymore. You're almost called retention. And retention takes a look at a snapshot of six months of your career. So they're gonna look at six months every, and it's gonna roll. So the first one's gonna drop off, the seven months gonna drop on, and it always rolls over the six month period. So you always wanna make sure that you're keeping up. Here's the biggest reason why people would have low quality, is a lot of times, I promise you, it's because of low uh, quantity. Low quantity. If you're not putting enough business on the books, a lot of times it's harder to maintain high quality because a lot of different reasons. Uh, first of all, if you only have $2,000 on the books and uh, one deal for 500 falls off for some reason, you got a $40 check. It's not even a big deal. It's a $40 check. But that $40 check, that 500 ALP, compared to the 2,000, would take your net to gross down to a 75%. One small deal. But the other guy over here, he's writing 5,000. You know, 500 falls off, he's still good. It's only 10%, he's still at 90%, right? So, so the quantity helps. The other reason why, and this is from Steve Greer, this is from the president of the company, the CEO of the company, I'm sorry. Uh, he said, that a lot of times he'll find that the people with low quantity um, typically have low quality because if I show up on Monday and I only have one policy for 1200 ALP and for some reason the app's not looking too strong, you know, I want to get him the coverage, he needs the coverage, he's probably going to get approved, but it's always better to be what? Safe than sorry. Number one rule, when in doubt, always trial the business. If there's any doubt, just trial it. It's the number one rule, I was always told. Trialing, it's great. I, I walked in the office yesterday, boom, right on our desk. Uh, Vince had a deal, um, $107 check got approved as a trial. That's nice, because now you walk into the office on a on a Thursday, and he all he had to do was just call him and say, "Congratulations, you got approved." And then he, when you when you place a trial, you always resolidify as well. You know, you want to resolidify because really at that point, the the only thing that could happen is they could cancel. Remember, if you trial something, um, there uh, if it gets declined, doesn't affect you. That's one of the biggest reasons why you want to trial something. Um, here's another thing though: if there's something wrong with them, and 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 you trial it and it comes through, it might come through and get rated. Now you call them to place the rating and they don't accept it. No big deal. It's going to NTO. But get, that NTO is never going to affect you because you never got paid on it. You know? So if you were to push that business through, like it's only deal for the week, come on, I got to get paid on Monday, you know, one of those type of things. And we push this deal through, we don't trial it, it goes through and somehow it didn't get declined. We made it through there, right? Next thing is the client never calls the withdrawal, so we're good there. 
Next thing is the underwriters actually underwrite the policy and they don't incomplete the policy, right? And they go through and approve it with a policy mod for an extra $82 a month. You call them, they don't accept it. Too much money, I, didn't, I can't afford that much. And you say, well, let's just reduce it down. I say, that's not, it's not worth it, they don't wanna do it. Now the business NTOs, and since we got paid on it, now it's gonna fall off, it's gonna hurt our retention. You know, so if you trial something, it doesn't matter if that business gets declined, withdrawals, a withdrawal is basically a client calling up and saying, um, I don't want the coverage anymore. And my conversation with them is, well, you don't have the coverage. It's an underwriting right now. So you're canceling something you don't even have. So why don't we let's wait and see if you get the coverage first before you even pull out your application. See, a withdrawal means they put the application in and now guess what they're doing with it. They're withdrawing that application. They never even have the coverage, so that's not a cancel. So a cancel happens after they get the coverage, you know? So the point of a trial is it protects us from a decline, it protects us from that withdrawal happening, which basically, what would a withdrawal be? Buyer's remorse, typically, you know? So um, buyer's remorse, or uh, pr pretty much that. Um, the, uh, the incomplete would be what? The underwriters are trying to complete the, the, the underwriting on that policy. They're looking at the medical records, but they see the guy has uh, diabetes, and then we don't have the diabetes listed on the thing, or we did, but they're miss we're missing some information. Like they didn't have um, what the medication was or something. So they're gonna come back to us and say, hey, we're trying to underwrite this policy. We're trying to get this coverage on your client for you, but we can't complete it without this information. We need to know what the dosage is. So now you gotta go back, get that dosage and get it back to them, you know? Um, or they may say, hey, we're trying to do this, but I can't get the doctor records. We sent the request, they're not getting it. We've been through this before. So what I do is that point is I'll call the doctor's office and I'll say, hey, you know, uh, we, I'm, I'm, you know, Tom Bean, I'm with American Income. I'm calling because we have a client in common. One of your patients, Mr. Susie Feldman, uh, Susie Feldman and her family applied for life insurance with our company. And um, our company sent a request for the medical records. And I was just calling to make sure that you received that request. And you check to see that they, they may say, we never got it. I say, can, can you please, you know, double check or can you send the medical records over to, they don't say they never got it, which is very rare. Our company sends the medical records. They send it to the right place. As long as you listed the right doctor on the app and everything too, right? Um, but you may have to go back to AIL and say, hey, or send them an email underwriting and just tell them, please request those medical records again. And then follow back up with the doctor. Did you get it? I had a situation where they just never were connecting. Like he was, they were saying they were sending it. They were saying they weren't getting it. And I just couldn't, we just couldn't figure it out. And we finally got to the bottom of it, you know, but um, if I did it like really dig into that situation, that application probably would have went incomplete to that client over something silly like that. And God forbid if something were to happen to them, you know, how bad would, I feel because I didn't go through all the measures to try and at least get to the bottom of it. I almost I felt like a detective that day, you know. It was like a whole week basically back and forth. So, but but those are some of the reasons why something would become incomplete. Uh, and then and then after it incomplete was the NTO it means it's not taken out. Why would the, that means they got approved for the policy but they didn't take it out. So that's a lot of times it gets approved, but it gets approved with some sort of rating or a change. I had a guy who who uh, who told me he didn't smoke. Did the oral come back? He gets approved for the coverage, but he gets approved as what? Smoker rating, right? So I had to call him and explain to him this and that. Um, and he wasn't happy. He didn't want to pay the extra $32 a month that it cost. You know, so I had to just make sure he understood that. Um, but I, it's a very assumptive call. If you ever want to play some mod, I'll simply just say, ring, ring. Tommy, hey, Tommy, this is Tom Bean with American Income for your life insurance. How are you doing today? Okay, great. I just have great news for you. I want you to know that your coverage uh, actually just got approved today. I want to be the first one to call and congratulate you and your family. You guys are going to be protected forever. You're never going to have to worry about that ever again. Now, um, Mary, I don't know if your wife or your husband's around or not. If you want to grab him or, or not, I could, I could go over some stuff with you. I'll get them both there. Um, but if not, I'll just go over. So Mary, basically, um, uh, I'll say uh, congratulations, you got approved and you must have you know, a pretty good relationship with your doctor. Uh, they gave you a good a good grading, I guess. Uh, what they did for your coverage, it looked like it only went up like an extra $2 a week for your rating. I guess it was just for a little bit of the, um, the 
the medication you were taking for your you know arthritis and for your high blood pressure which is absolutely amazing you're in super great health so now you guys will be locked in forever I just want you to know that that extra uh, twelve dollars a month is going to be now to be sixty four dollars instead of fifty two didn't think it'd be a big deal or not but I just wanted to let you know and congratulate you guys today um so so moving forward everything's gonna be handled on the twenty seventh of the month for you okay just like you planned on and I just want to make sure Mary uh, first of all just to remind you this is a uh, not a short-term fix, this was obviously a long-term solution. You know, so I just want to make sure that, you know, first of all, um, that this $64 a month is going to be comfortable for you each, each month on the 27th, okay? And if it isn't, I, I could help you making adjustments because the most important thing is making sure you have the benefit of keeping it comfortable. Is that 64 going to be comfortable for you? Okay, great. Now, um, I know things may happen. The roof may blow off the house. The, the, the cars may need tires. Uh, you may need to get a new hot water heater. The kids are going to get older. We may buy them a car. A lot of things are going to happen. You're going to do so much for your family. And literally out of all the things you've ever done for your family, Joe and Mary, Christmas, birthdays, vacations, I will tell you, the decision that you made today uh, is one of the best, if not the best and most important thing you could have ever done for your family. So I just want to make sure, though, that no matter what happens, because things are going to happen, that you keep this program in place. So kids get older, they may need to get, 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 get a new car or whatever, no matter what happens, you just need to make sure this program stays in place. Does that make sense, Mary? I know I made a lot of promises to you today. I made promises that basically at one of the worst times of your life, I promise we're gonna be there for you. And what I need you to do today is I just need you to make that promise back to me that no matter what happens, you promised me that you're going to keep this program in place. And as long as you keep this program in place, I guarantee you we'll be able to keep our promise to you like we have for the millions of other families that were dedicated to service. Does that make sense to you, Joe? So, Mary, how long do we need to keep this in place for? Forever, that's right. Can you promise me you guys keep this in place? Mary, you promise me you make sure this is always in place? And, and that's how I do my solidify every time, you know? Um, so, so whether it was over the phone, that was more like I was calling to place a mod, you know, but if it was in the home, same, same thing, you know, so if you can go through that whole promise deal with them, break it down. Uh, I think, you know, what helps me communicate with people, whether it's, um, just everywhere I go basically is my, uh, uh willingness to elaborate. I'm not, I don't mind taking the time to elaborate a little bit more so that they clearly understand what I mean. And if it takes me to use three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10 analogies, I'll use them until they get it. They might not understand the baker analogy. They don't understand the driver analogy. They don't understand the singer analogy. They don't understand mowing the law analogy. You know, let me just use pure numbers then. You know, let me add them up. Here, let's say we have 10 apples and there's six apples. And I'll use apples until they can get it. You know what I'm saying? Don't be um, in a rush to just get through stuff with people. Do not assume that they know what you're talking about. Assume that they don't know what you're talking about. If you're gonna assume anything at all, assume they didn't get it. Like if, if you told somebody something and they didn't get it, what would you do? You would re-explain it to the guy, you know what I mean? Like, what don't you get? You say, let me break it down for you this way, you know? So, um, so that, that's, that's a little sales tip right there. Um, but, but discount cards, you know, I was going to go over some discount card stuff for us because I know we have them um, and they're a great, great resource. First of all, just so you know, um, most discount cards usually are policy holders. How do they get a discount card? Somebody sat down with them from our company at one point and gave them a discount card. They filled that out and sent it in. Think about that. So they got a discount card. Now, how did they get that discount card? Well, two ways. We sat down with them, gave them their discount card through the presentation, and they never bought insurance. That's the first one. The second way is everybody that buys insurance, everybody that buys life insurance with our company, automatically gets a health service discount card. We click the box at the end of the thing, right? I think it's still on the e app, isn't it? Yeah, you just click the box, give them a free health service discount card. So, um, so that's the two ways that they got there. So they're either a policy holder or they're not. 
And the nice thing is, if they're a policyholder, well, you just don't got a health service discount card lead anymore. Scratch that, turn it into straight POS. That's a POS lead. That's the best lead we can get. We all know why we love POS, right? POS are the best. These people already pay money into our company, so they trust you. They're going to want to hear what you have to say because they're paying money into the company. They don't really know what they're paying for. They don't. Sit down with, sit down with 10 clients and ask them these three questions. Say, okay, so you have a policy with our company. Okay. So um, first of all, uh, pop quiz, you know, uh, what type of coverage do you think you have? Full life return. A lot of times we'll get that wrong. <laughs> Second thing I said, okay. How much coverage do you think you have? A lot of times we'll get that wrong. They don't know. And then ask them this. Most importantly though, why did you take that coverage out? And they'll look at you and like, huh? And I go like this, because remember, I'm not afraid to elaborate. So I'll say to them, if Joe were to pass away, what would be the what would this seventy thousand dollars? What would you use that for? That's what I'm asking, really. And why did you take that coverage out? Ask them those three questions. A lot of times they don't know at all. They're like, I don't even remember why I took it out, actually. So it's good for us to go back in there and to, to, to educate the policy holders on really what they have. So, um, so, so what a policy holder is great because you know they've got a bank account, show ratios up. It's just it's, Everything's higher on me. Everything's higher. The retention's higher. You don't have to worry about them canceling. They're not going to cancel, <laughs> you know? So unless you just go in there and you, you like super oversell them or something, but you got to fill that out. Um, so uh, health service discount card. What, what I would do is, is after I went over the discount card with them, I'll basically just say, uh, and I would almost like act like I'm going to move on with the back, with the with the uh, presentation. So I go, here's your discount card. Here's how it works. You can now start taking advantage of all these benefits. Does that make sense to you, Joe? Makes sense to you, Mary? Okay, great. And how many tie downs are we using in our presentations? You know, I, I think we can get them numbers up. I don't know how many tie downs you're using right now, um, but but I'd be willing to bet you probably could throw a couple more tie downs into your presentation, unless you're I, unless you're the tie down king. Um, at one point in my career. Uh, I got called out on using too many tie downs from a client. Guess what? My, I, I went through all these phases, you know, where I kept saying, like, make sense, make sense, make sense, sound good, sound good. So I went through a phase where I kept saying, sound good. That was my tie down, you know? <laughs> my client was, my client was like, she, she looked at me and she's like, I'm just going to call you a sound good guy. Because <laughs> I just said, sound good so many times. I'm like, so does that sound good? Sound good so far? Sound good? Sound good? Sound good? <laughs> so mix them up a little bit if you can, you know, instead of make sense, you know, throw a couple, pick of them, you know. But I saw some of them are like, yeah, does it make sense why they set this up for all the members? Yeah, you know, uh, things like that. Um, but but anyways, uh, uh, I, I'd ask them all this thing. So then I then I'd act like I'm moving on with the program. And I'd be like, oh, I, I actually almost forgot. This benefit card, it typically goes for three to five hundred dollars on the open market. But right now, they're getting this discount card out to all the members at no cost. And what they want to do is they want to be able to to increase the discount. They're trying to add more providers and and, and extend the network. Um, and the way it works is like union buying power. See, the more people that that use this card, well, the the bigger discounts we're going to be able to get and more network providers are going to get everything added to it. So what they're doing right now to help encourage the usage of this card is they're actually allowing uh, our members to sponsor up to five family members or friends to take advantage of the same health service discount card. And they don't have to be in the union or even pay any union dues and they're still going to get the whole uh, discount benefit at all the same discount rates. So Joe, most people get started with their contingent beneficiary. Uh, I know on your AD and D certificate, you, you listed your sister and then you listed um, your brother-in-law. So uh, we'll get started with your sister. That'd be Shirley. Okay. Well, she'll be your first one. And then we'll actually get set up your second one with your uh, brother-in-law, Brian. Okay. 
So we have two down. That means there's three left. Who's next? Who'll be the next one that we can get these, these uh, cards, the discount card out to? Got two down, three left. Who do you think would be? You, you can look in your phone. Someone down at work. Could be your neighbor. Anybody's from the bar. And I just put my head down and we'll come. Who, who else do you think we can marry? Who do we need to get this out to? Right? So remember, it's, it's never, it's never, do you know someone that you want to get this to is the worst thing you could say. And I heard it, and I probably said it before. So do, do you know anybody that you want to get the discount card to? Think about that. So do you guys know anybody you want to get this to? It's, 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 it's do you know someone is asking them a, a yes or no question, right? So they're going to say no. And, and, and then you're saying, using the word want. When you use the word want, it doesn't invoke people to want to do stuff. Uh, like it's, you got to use the word need, right? If you want to do something versus need to do something, the need's going to happen more than the want. So I say, instead of saying, do you know someone that you want to get this to? They're going to say no. You want to say, who do you know? That's an open-ended question. That, that we need to get this to. So instead of saying um, that you want to, you're talking about one person wanting something. Let's say that we need. Who do you know that we need to get this to? Versus, do you know someone that you want to get this to? See, you want is like one person wanting something. But we need, when you say we need, that's a lot of people needing something. So it's going to have a more call to, act, to action. So small verbiage like that. Uh, and, and, you know, what happened with that is some people will say, I don't know anybody. And you probably a little bit, but I'm not going to sit there and be hard pressed if they don't give me discount card referrals. But I'm going to offer them the opportunity. At least do it and do it the right way and give them the opportunity. Because if I do it and I do it like a bomb, I'm not really giving them the opportunity. I'm giving the opportunity to say no. You know, if you do it the right way, at least you're going to give them that opportunity to, 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 to do it. And what will happen is, is half of them will give you half. If you do it really well, you can be really good at this. But if you just go through the, the system that I just went through, you'll find that half of them will give you half. So if you sat down with, uh, I don't know, um, 12 people for the week, okay? So we went out four days a week, and we sat down with three people a day. Pretty simple, three, three sets a day. We could knock that out. Uh, and still have a lot of time to do a whole bunch of other stuff. So, um, so if we do three sets a day, 12 sets in a week, and half gives you half, and we're asking for how many? Five, right? So you're allowed to sponsor up to five family members or friends. Now, you might just run into somebody says, why do you limit yourself to five? Well, they typically don't give you that much more anyways. And if they want to give you more, all you do is you say that just they'll say, well, I actually have like a bunch of people I want to get these to. Like, well, how many do you think that you, that you need to get these over to? And she'll, she'll say, I, I have a lot. I say, well, here, let, let, me, let me check this. I'll be honest with you. Um, some of the families are, are newer to the area. They didn't have that many people to refer. So you could just use some of their sponsorships. You know, so there's always a way around it if you want to, you know, don't back yourself into a corner per se on that situation. But if you're looking at a five is what you're asking for from 12 people, right? So half will give you half. So if, if you're asking for five from 12 people, then, then that means six of them are going to give you two and a half. You know what I'm saying? Half will give you half. So six times two and a half is what? 15. You got 15 referrals right there. Okay. Out of those 15 referrals, on average, one out of three of them will actually get booked for an appointment. If you wait till call night, that's what we see. So I collect them on Wednesday, but I don't call my referrals till Thursday. I collect them Tuesday, but I don't call them till Thursday. I collect them Friday, but I don't call them till Monday. That's typically about one third of those get booked over time if you, if you work them throughout the month. If you call them in the home, it's a much higher ratio. If you call them as soon as you leave the home, it's still a much higher, higher ratio. But um, 
Half of them you have. So it means you got 15, and then out of 15 that you collected, how many of them are you going to actually set? Probably five. But if you set five of them, you're going to give how many presentations? Probably at least two. Two presentations. Those are your extra two presentations a week that you can get. So every week we should be just calling people up and giving them a discount card. They buy, they buy. If they don't buy, don't buy. Give them a discount card. That's part of my job. Give two discount cards a week to referrals. That right there, you're going to trip and fall over clients, trip and fall over, over business and more referrals. Two presentations a week over 50 weeks is 100 presentations. 100 presentations is 30 sales. 30 sales at 800 ALP is 24,000. 24,000 is $12,000 for the year. So basically you got to think part of your monthly job is to make sure that I drop off two health service discount card referrals every week. And if I do that, I'll make an extra thousand dollars a month. Just taught you guys how to make an extra thousand dollars a month. If, you, <clears throat> if I called, if you, somebody called you up right now and say, Hey, I got a way where you can make an extra couple thousand dollars a month. Would you be interested? You know what I would say? Yeah. I say, heck yeah. Cause it happened to me. It happened to me a couple times. Recently it was funny. It was a year or two, three years ago, you know, I make hundred to, I don't know, what do I make 120,000 a month, 70 on a bad month. And the guy calls me, Hey, I got a way where you can make a couple extra thousand dollars a month. And I didn't even think twice. I was like a couple extra thousand dollars a month. Heck yeah. Let me hear about this. He said, all right, maybe for some coffee, you know, I'm down to listen. And if, if I'm making a hundred thousand dollars a month and somebody offers me to make a couple extra thousand dollars a month and I want to do it. What do you think someone that makes $3,000 a month would want to do? If you offer that to him, you know, so that was an epiphany for me. I was like, what a great thing to say to somebody, especially if you're just trying to even recruit them into the business. Ask anybody out there that question. <laughs> if I could show you how to make a couple extra thousand dollars a month, a couple more thousand, a couple extra thousand, would you be interested? Who's going to say no to that? You know? So right there, that's a way to make a you know thousand dollars extra a month right there. An extra twenty-four thousand dollars in business for the year, just from from mastering that one little move, you know. So we're going to learn moves. You know, it's like if you want to think about like martial arts or something, or boxing, or jiu-jitsu, or whatever. You know, this is just another move you put into your arsenal. And sometimes you're in a match and you never ever use an elbow, right? But it's there, it's ready to go. You know, you might get into a home and you never need to dive into the whole health service discount card thing. They're more than a child safe and they're giving you child safe referrals. You give them a discount card and all that, but that might not be your whole thing, but you have it if you need to use it, you know? So I want to make sure that we want to make sure that we're just ready. We have all the tools in our tool belt. So when we go out to the job, you don't have to keep running back to Home Depot, you know, to get the stuff, right? We already have it in there and you're, you're good to go. Plus you can start ironing up the jobs now. So now you know, okay, this one's a single, this one's a senior. Now you know what tools to bring to that job versus the other one. So, so I'm, I used to do construction. Well, my, well, my, here's what my, my job every summer um, from high school to college, eight years in a row, uh, I worked uh, manual labor from, from seven o'clock in the morning until five o'clock at night with my cousin Chico. My cousin Chico had a home improvement business in Swickley, where it's all these old, nice homes, rich people, you know, place where I never belonged. It was cool just driving through and looking at them houses. But we would do all kind of cool stuff. And, and, um, uh, what the heck, why am I telling you this again? I'm a Home Depot. Home Depot, yeah. We, I, I'd have to go to the thing in the morning, and, and, and there, we'd have to be at the house at eight o'clock. So in order to be at the job site at eight, you had to meet the guy at seven, my cousin, and I'd pull up and his garage would be open at seven o'clock and have music playing already. And uh, he said, load the truck up. And I'd have to load the truck up with the tools that we needed for that job. Because he was so good, he was a professional. He didn't pack up his whole garage, take it to the house, 
and say whatever we need is going to be in there. He only took the tools that were needed just for that job. So he knew if we were doing a plumbing job, we just brought the plumbing stuff. We're doing tile work, we just brought the tile work. Different stuff for the roof, different stuff for you know all kind of paint job was a completely different you know material for bringing ladders and different things like that. Scaffolding we had to build. So 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 same thing in this business is if you know you know you have a certain job to do. Then, then, then you're going to be able to be more prepared because you already have the tools in your tool belt. You already have them, and you're going to be able to be, be at your disposal. Um, I would call them weapons. I would call them, uh, you know, moves. Right? Like, if, let's say you had to go slay, 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 slay a dragon or whatever. You know, what could, you got to have all the weapons in your arsenal because you don't want you don't know what their weakness is. You want you don't know what the weakness is. Right? It could it could be it could be the client could really um, love the freedom of choice certificate. If you gave a weak ass freedom of choice certificate pitch because you didn't think that was something that they were really going to buy because you didn't recognize that, right? Or uh, maybe what was the hot button for them was uh, was the mortgage. She, she literally doesn't sleep at night. She's worried about the mortgage. And we don't really have that mortgage pitch down. So, and, and she's relying on not just, you got the mortgage dagger, but your mortgage dagger is only this long, right? And she, and it's dog. So you got a little bit of a mortgage dagger, but it's only this long and it's dull. You need to pull out the big boy, the big sharp thing, you know, that suit yeah, you have to hold with two, you have to hold it with two hands. That's the only thing that's gonna take this dragon down, but you're not that your weapon's not that developed yet, right? So you might have a little bit of some tools in your tool, but we don't have to sharpen them tools up a little bit, maybe upgrade them as well. That's how do you sharpen something? Friction, right? You gotta hurt a little bit. That's how things get, get, get sharp. You gotta put some friction into it. Well, friction is called sparring. How do you get better? You gotta spar. You gotta spar. So think about how much time you spent last week sparring with somebody on your presentation. Are you only sparring with clients? That's probably not good if you're only sparring with the clients, right? Get some sparring time with your partners. Get out there and, 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 and get, get have somebody critique you and, 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 and uh, give you uh, advice on, 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 on whatever part of your presentation it is. Have somebody critique you on your freedom of choice pitch, on your solidification, um, on your rapport building, on your phone calls. Let them do it. Accept it. Uh, if my coach didn't film practice and then make us watch it, I never would have did that shit. You think I would have been like, hey, you know, it'd be a good idea for me to get better. It's if I could hire somebody to film me when I'm practicing. And then if I could hire a coach to watch my practices with me to show me where I messed up. Like who would have thought that in college? Right? But if you think about it, that's what we should be doing. We should be filming all of our presentations that we give, every single home you do. I mean, what are you here to do? We're here to do it and get better or not. What is our main purpose? Our main purpose has to be to grow. And if you don't have a systematic way built into how we're going to grow, it's not going to happen on accident. Um, showing up is a big part of the job, but now we got to turn it up when we show up. Like I could be at the gym for three hours and someone else can be there for 45 minutes and get a way better workout. Right? So how more how much productive can we be? I can guarantee you the top coaches out there in college football and everything, they're filming and then they're watching the film with their people. So um, if, 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 if my coach didn't do that for me, I would have did it for myself. So I know a lot of us, we're not thinking like that because it's not the way we're, we're, we're thought to think. So I want us to really think about ways that we can improve ourselves on a weekly basis that I don't have to go out of my way to do. I'm already doing it. Like, all right, I can film myself. Like today, I have to give four presentations. I got, I got, I got a full schedule lined up. You know, two, four, six, eight, nine. I got a ten o'clock lined up tonight. I got four appointments. I'm going to run at least, at least. Um, some of them are going to sell. Some of them are not. I'm probably going to mess up a couple, do some things wrong here and there. You know, but, but, but at the end of the day, how am I going to get better if I just give these presentations? That's going to give me some reps. That's good. But how am I going to get better than that? Well, if somebody can give me advice on what they saw, you know, because you know what they say, the eye in the sky never lies. 
The eye in the sky never lies. And here's why they say this, okay? And this is what they – football practice, coaches are coaching on the field. They have these big scaffolding set up. And on top of the scaffolding, all the um, college kids, they, that was part of their work-study job. My boys did it. Sean, my boy Sean Croner did it. He was one of the work study guys, him and Courtney, Alonzo, and all, they all would go and, and, and they would film our football practices. And they'd climb up the scaffolding, they'd film. Even if it was raining, they had to film our practices. Um, and sometimes the coach would call you out on something you did wrong. Not call you out, but he, he would coach you like a coach is supposed to do. Like if you're a coach and you see your player doing what they're not supposed to do, what do you do? Walk by and go get, go get a drink? You have to stop. I'm, I'm trying to go get a drink. My player's over here messing up. I wish I could get a drink. My job as a coach is to make the correction, right? So the coach is coaching. He's telling me, he's like, listen, before, when you run this pattern, before you break, you have to break the bubble. I was like, I broke the bubble. He said, you didn't break the bubble. I said, I, I, I was right up in there. He said, the eye of the sky never lies. I was like, all right, we'll see you on films, <laughs> you know? And then, and, and, uh, and then he pulls it up on film and he replaces it back. He hits the button. <laughs> and he sees me like, <laughs> look, see that? See that? He's pointing on the screen to everybody, right? Yeah. So, uh, but, but, but that, 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 was, that, was, that was college. One thing I did learn is, is um, uh, Jim Tressel. He won the national championship coaching Ohio State Buckeyes. Maurice Claret was a running back at that point. Simon's good friends with Jim Tressel, Maurice Claret, so we all uh, became friends with them and I've hung out, met with them many times. Maurice Claret came to the hospital when my son Antonio was in the hospital, come home and visit him, visit him with Simon. But, um, but Jim Tressel was the head coach of that football team. He's in the College Hall of Fame for coaching right now. He won two or three national championships with, Ohio, with Youngstown State, and he won a national championship with Ohio State. He's the president of Youngstown State right now. Jim Tressel said this. He said that after practice, players had to watch film of the practice, then they were allowed to eat. You're not allowed to eat until you watch the film first. So guess what everybody did? They made sure they went and got that film session in, you know, because they wanted to eat. So, so he said that's how important film was. The practice was important. The film was, there was two parts. Like if you just practice and you don't film it, you're really only doing half. Like if you don't watch your film, like if you don't watch it, it's like he said it was only half. So if you think about it, if we go out this week and we give 10 presentations, that's only half of the battle. The other half for us to learn off of those is to, to watch them with somebody and, and get better at that, right? So um, if you could have your managers hop in on your sit downs, that's the best. Before, if I was in the field and I wanted my GA or my manager to ride with me, I would have to call them a week ahead of time, plan it out um, because they would have to get in the car and we would have to drive out to the field together. Logistically, and, and that person would have to book their whole day just to be with me, you know. So, so now, if I had a manager um, and I had to sit down at three, I could call him and say, "Hey, I got to sit down at three on Tuesday. Can you sit in with me? I want you to watch how I do it." He's like, "Sure," and he could be in his office, and you could be in your office, and he could just hop on real quick, hop back off, and get back to what he was doing. If I wanted my manager to ride with me in the field before, they would have to literally get in a car and drive out there. It was so much harder for us to get all this accomplished. So now with, with technology, number one, um, we should and could be able to have managers sitting in with us just to literally just give me feedback. I don't want to sit there and close nothing. I want him to watch me close and tell me, you know, what I did right and what I needed to improve on, if, if anything at all. I've gotten critiqued before and I said, I would have done nothing different. You rocked that. I'm like, great. Now I know what to keep doing, you know, uh, which is also good advice. Um, but the second thing is, is if we're not having a manager sit in on it, let's record these. 
record your presentation and get in the habit of doing it. And then you're gonna get your team in the habit of doing it because you're gonna have a new person and they're gonna need to grow and get better. Um, and you know that the best tool is for you to watch their presentations, but you're busy. They got their sit downs. You can't hop in with them. We're growing. We've got construction over here. We're putting in a new, new, new whole new facility. You're, you're working over here. They're working over there. You can't sit down with them. They can record it and you can watch it with them later on in the night, the next morning. You know, it's not that bad. I mean, we waste a lot of time watching a bunch of garbage on the TV anyways. If I could watch something, I'd rather watch my, 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 my homie. My, my main person, the person that I love and I care about, I want them to be successful. I'd rather spend time watching that. You know, my favorite stuff to watch was was uh, films when, of, of of Tommy uh, wrestling, like all season. I was like, uh, all in the we all week. That's all we did is watch films of his matches. Part of going to the match for us was to get the film. I, I was obsessed with. It. I had two people filming. Jess and my dad were filming because I knew one of them would mess up because it gets intense. Like Jess is screaming and things all shaking. I'm like, babe, I can't even see. She's like, I know, I have a screen. She's like pointing down at the ground. She's like, get him. I'm like, the phone's like pointing over there. You know, so, so, but the filming of his thing was the only way I was able to coach it. Because when you're in the game, you see stuff, but you, it's different. Like when you're in the home, it's different. It's intense. You're, you're like, you don't really see it. And it's, it, it, when you have the camera on you, it's a whole different perspective. It's a whole different perspective. So we have a tool that can help us grow uh, right now as well. So I want to make sure we're using that as well. I'm driving down the road over here. And if you see in the road, it's tore up. What a mess. What an absolute mess uh, in our office over here. So you know what they do is they have the, um, before they, they, they pave a road, uh, they have to grind it up. You know, so they basically just take this machine that has these, teeth on it like diamond head teeth and they grind up the road and they make it all why do you know why they grind it all up and make it real rough because um they're they're gonna lay a new pavement over top of it like blacktop you know that real nice asphalt and if it's the more ground up it is the more rough that it is the better that the new asphalt sit. if they just um if it was a flat surface and they could just put it right on it, it doesn't stick as well. That makes sense? The other reason they grind it up is because if they keep putting these new layers, before you know it, the road's going to be higher than the sidewalk. So they have to keep, keep it down as well. So I'm driving through that and all I can think of is, man, this sucks. Right? But, but what? What else do you think I was thinking? You ever drive through like the, the road's a complete mess? It's right by your house too. Your house, right by your house, and you're thinking, man, this sucks. But be nice. this is going to be nice when it's done. Man, that's all I'm thinking. Yeah. Man, it's going to be so nice outside our office. We're going to be able to shoo, just get right out of here, you know? But for a temporary time, we might have to slow down, deal with some construction. They're ripping the road up, you know? The road probably doesn't like that shit, you know? But the road's probably thinking, man... I'm gonna be nice when this is done, right? It's a little bit painful for it. Diamond cuts get ripped all up in it. Kind of reminds me of anybody seen the movie Cars when Lightning McQueen messed up the road and then they made him repave it. And afterwards, all the cars were out on the road and they were loving life. They're like, ooh, for a car, a new paved road. Imagine if you were a car. New paved road is pretty much the best it can get. Then, you know, so, so anyways, uh, you know, that's, that's where we're at, guys. You know, you may have to you may have to, to to rip the house down before you even put your your, your foundation in, um, like like those houses over there in Michigan at, or, or on Lake Michigan. So some of us some of us already ripped their house down. Some of us are, are in the phases of just laying that foundation. Take a look at your some of your people. Sometimes you might want to take some of your your, some of your friends or someone like that, and you just want to just plug them in and start building a foundation, but you're like, wait a minute. We can't start building on top of what we have right now. We're going to have to like eliminate some of these things before we can start putting in. You might have to kind of uh, give up who you are for who you want to become. You know, they're going to have to lose some old habits and pick up some new habits and stuff like that. 
So, um, so anyways, uh, I think um, as far as scripts go and everything, I wanted to go over the health service discount card today and covered it. Um, phone calls, uh, there's scripts out there for the phone calls. I'm not going to dive into that. Literally, if you stick to those scripts, they work. Uh, I think um, I just talked to Casey. Casey set three health service discount cards last night. And I said, what, which script did you use? And so I just used the normal health service discount card script. And I said, did you change anything on it? He said, nope, read right off the script. And he booked three of them, and two of them were actually policy holders for today. You know? So uh, great job on the phones. Don't forget the numbers. Um, right now, company averages, is, it's taking about 20 to 30 uh, calls to get one appointment set on your schedule. So just knowing those numbers, what would it take in order to get the schedule that you need? And, and I'll just leave one on this, right? So if, if you make 300 phone calls in one week, that week, you're going to set typically 10 appointments, 10. If you set 10, you're going to see five and close one. So, so 300 appointments is typically going to get you one sale, one sale. Now, you make 600 appointments, or 600 calls, I'm sorry. 600 calls will have 20 set. 20 set will give you 10 seen. 10 seen will give us at least three sales. So if you do 300 calls, you make one sale. If you make 600 calls, you make three sales. So you double the calls, but triple the results. Three sales is 2,400 if you're just getting $67 checks. So if you show them a $300 check, a $200 check, and a $100 check, you could at least reduce them down to $67 check. And most of them need a lot more than that. So we give them $67, three of them, 800, three times 800 is 2,400. That's at least $1,200 in our pocket. So you make $1,200 for making 600 calls. It's not bad, it's like two bucks a call. You know, so if you wanna break it down that way as well. So, so the next thing though is, is when are we executing these calls and when is that planned in my schedule? And whenever you plan it in your schedule, you have to block it off and put the blinders on and make sure that there's no distractions or disturbances going on during that, 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 that time period. So you could actually execute 25, 30 calls an hour. You know, I feel like we could probably put up a good 30 calls an hour. If you do 30 calls an hour, you can, you can have 100 calls done in three hours. So every three hours, we should bang out 100 calls. So when you're planning out your week that way, you plan, plan it out like that. So that'd be looking like 18 hours of call. 18 hours of call should be able to get me right around 600 phone calls for a week. Well, 18 hours of calling, I know Monday is my call day, strong call day. I could at least put in eight hours. You know, most, most people work eight hours. I'll put in at least eight hours on a Monday, eight hours on a Thursday. We got 16 of those hours already done, you know? And then if we can call for, for, for two or three hours per day, or at least two hours on a Tuesday, two hours on a Wednesday, two hours on a Friday, there's another six hours right there. Six on 16 is, 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 is 22 hours, right? So we only needed 18. So if you put in the hours, it's like half a week of, of calling, half a week of seeing people is typically what it would be. The way to cut down on those numbers is referrals, obviously. You're collecting referrals, you're doing the deal with the contingent beneficiaries, you're gonna get three sales from, from not sitting down with 10 people. You're gonna get three sales from sitting down with six people, you know? And in order to sit down with six people, you're not gonna even have to have 12 set. You're only gonna need 10 set because they're referrals. You know, in order to get 10 set, because they're referrals, you don't even have to make 300 phone calls. So referrals, you don't need to make 200 phone calls. You know, so you can get your three sales for making 200 phone calls too, if you work the referrals, because referrals are, you know, basically triple what a normal lead would be. Referrals still close at the highest. And the last thing is when you collect your referrals, make sure you put them into your e-app, because they're gonna be in your e-app for you to use. And, uh, and, and it's more, more um, uh, organized that way. So appreciate your time today, guys. Let's have a great, great weekend. We've got stack schedules today. Um, bring the energy. 
Don't just go through the motions. If you have an appointment, <clears throat> get warmed up for it. Practice. If I had like a football game, our coach, we'd have to meet him three hours before the game. We had to do walkthroughs, stretches. I mean, literally stretch. Stretch out the free appointments. And your voice is going to flow from down here. You know, so so like if I was in a car all day driving and then I got out of the car and I walked to the house, I always noticed my voice wasn't like as good. So I had to stretch out and get my abdominal, my, my lungs full, and I had to actually make sure that I was projecting my voice. And, and they take acting classes and all the actors who are on TV, think about the people that are on TV, especially if you're, if you're in person, you're trying to do a live performance, man, you got to really have that good voice that can connect with people, you know? And you don't want to be yelling, but you want to project your voice. And, and, and if you're definitely, if you're on TV, if you're on TV, unless you have a real nice microphone like this, you know, this microphone, you can get like real close. It sounds all crazy. But unless you have something like that and you know how it works, still learn how that works. You can plug earphones into this thing and hear your voice too, you know. Um, but, but, but bring some energy to, to your appointments today and don't just walk into your first one and that be your first time you're saying these words, you know. Your first time that you run the, the opening play of the football game shouldn't be, be the first time in the football game, you know. We would meet three hours beforehand, and the coach would be like, here's the plays we're going to run. Let's practice them a few times, right? So that the first time we do this isn't out there in the field. The only person you're going to hurt, really, is our clients at that point, right? So remember, professional preparation provides a professional paycheck. And all of us here are professionals, and we all should be earning professional paychecks. The difference is it sets us aside that preparation. So take the time. No time preparing is a time wasted. They say what? Uh, every hour planning today saves me two hours tomorrow. So it's going to save you time in the home. It's going to make your day more efficient. You know, sit down after this meeting and take a half hour and just write your schedule out for the day and think about the details of how you can execute a little bit better. You know, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm running from here to here. I just realized there's no time for me to eat. I'm at 3.30, I'm going to call a door dash in so it gets here at 4 and I could eat it. Uh, you got to plan that stuff out, right? So, so anyways, I appreciate your time, guys. Love you guys. We have a big weekend coming up. This is the end of the month. Let's rock it. Thanks. Good stuff, boys.